Hello, everybody. It's always hard to... Here we go. That camera right hey. there. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Rob and Rob Show. Music commentary from your favorite Robs. I am Rob White. And I'm Rob Segovia. How you doing, Rob? Doing great? I'm pretty good. Just got off of Live at Five. I had to produce and anchor. Um, that was interesting. Busy but man. it worked because, you know, Rob. Because <laughs> Rob. You had a good week? Yeah, it was a good week. How about you? How about you? I had a pretty solid week. That's good. Like, <laughs> we got the small talk out the way right there. Yeah. All right, uh, welcome to the Rob and Rob Show. Again, music commentary for your favorite Robs. We're going to get into our albums of the week, song of the week, and then we'll go into our main segments, which include our favorite. Yeah. Oh, you can go ahead and say I, I didn't know if you were transitioning <laughs> to me. You, was, you know, go ahead. All right, we got our anticipated <laughs> albums of late 2018, early 2019, and then we're going to get into some of our favorite albums of 2018. Sounds like a plan. You want to kick us off with album of the week? Okay, yeah. Um, for myself, I picked The Transition by Packy. Not a lot of people know him. He's uh, from East Lansing, Michigan. And, you know, he's, he's awesome. I mean, he played uh, basketball at Michigan State, and now he's a full-time rapper. He moved to Los Angeles, and he started his career um, with a couple mixtapes um, about that life and um, familiar with Floss and then the sunroom, and he put all of his songs from that onto the transition. Mm -hmm. And that's what this album is. A lot of uh, great songs. The Campaign is one of my favorites from that. I used to play it all the time back in like 2012, 2013. I would watch uh, this YouTuber called Nobody Epic, and he was a part of this bigger crew. And he put me onto a lot of, um, of Packy's songs, and the transition is a great album to get into him. And then for uh, more albums in the future. Mad Life, he is another one, and The Parlay. Those are great albums. Wow. So, He said, you don't want to put me on, well, not put me on, because I haven't really checked out his music, but Packy, didn't you say you met him before or something like that, or had a couple ex exchanges with him? Yeah, we had a few exchanges on YouTube. I would comment on you know, his videos, and this was back when he didn't have that many views. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to get you know, familiar with artists before they get big. That's my big thing. Yeah. I'm not. A, I'm not a hipster. Getting your hipster yeah, bag right now. <laughs> no, I am. And uh, you know, he's he's a great guy. And then I he came down for a show in Chicago, and I got to stay after and meet him because there were only like 20 people there. Right, nice. And now he sells out shows and does nationwide tours, so it's awesome. Right. That's how I feel about the weekend being on top of, that, or being one of the first fans to really like his music and now he's one of the biggest superstars on the planet so it's always a good feeling to be that hipster a little bit you know just a little bit so good pick all right for my album of the week it goes to Tory Lanez and his Chicks Tape 4 now this I'm not a huge Tory Lanez fan until I listen to this this is where he transitioned into his more 90s homage type music because every song on this mixtape is a sample or a rendition from uh, a classic 90s song or 90s R&B song from like Usher and Genuine and um, yeah. um, I'm blanking on my R&B artists at the time but uh, yeah and it, it's it's great he has great vocals and stuff like that from I Toronto yeah. too I remember you showed me uh, his music and um, and then this mixtape in particular. And actually, uh, fun fact, Tory Lanez actually featured on one of Packy's songs um, off of Same Difference. It's um, Slide. Wow. Yeah. A little crisscross right there, yeah. unintentionally. I like unintentionally. it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Tory Lanez, he's a good vocalist. He's from, like I said, from Toronto. Um, isn't affiliated with Drake, which is kind of rare if you're an artist from Toronto who's in the hip hop and R&B world. But he kind of does want to separate himself from Drake, kind of make his own, uh, I guess, wave in the music um, area in Toronto. And this is probably where he got most of his friends, or friends, most of his fans from. <laughs> he probably got some friends from it too. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's incredible. If you like 90s R&B and you like this new wave of R&B, then you'll probably like the Chick State 4. And I heard from an inside source, I don't know how inside it is, yeah. probably just Google or whatever, but he's making another one. And I don't know if it's going to be the same 90s, early 2000s R&B um, samples, but other than that, I am super excited. That'd be me. cool if he, uh, you know, flips some 80s songs or, Ooh, you know. or like some soul or like some, you know, like uh, uh, I keep blanking on names right now, but uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. Whitney Houston, that's a good one. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as far as old music goes. But yeah, all right, that was my album of the week. You want to get into your song of the week? Or yeah. songs, I should, I'd rather say? I have, Yeah, I have three songs. Um, Adult Swim by John Bellion. I talked mm. about this earlier this week on The Real Deal. And I, you know, it, it was awesome trying to dissect some of these songs because um, a lot of the songs on this project are more, you know, in his element. He's less going for the mainstream mm -hmm. and he's more trying to find a new sound. He's always about the creativity and we talked about this multiple times where um, John Bellion would make different beats to the songs and then he would show it on YouTube, like the I making know. of a certain song and mm -hmm. I showed you the Superman, the gift and the curse and the way he uh, made his vocals sound like a guitar is something that will always stick with me. And with this album, he doesn't do too much uh, experimentation with different sounds because he obviously has enough money to, you know, form his musical numbers the way he wants to. Right. He can hire whoever he wants. Exactly. Um, especially after his success on All Time Low, which has like 300 million streams. We don't want to get into that though. <laughs> wow. This is what we're talking Drop about. Drop that numbers <laughs> real quick. This is what we're talking about. Adult Swim by John Bellion. I just showed you before the show. Yeah, and I really like it. It has sweet beat switches mm -hmm. throughout the song. And, you know, it sounds like a radio tuner, mm -hmm. the way it switches between the different sections. Yeah, like an old radio, like where you have to physically turn the dial. Yeah, and it turns the dial into a different part of the song. And that's what I really like about that. I want to get into Off D's by J.I.D. featuring Ooh, J. Cole. Yeah, um, J.I.D. Awesome song. J.I.D., I'm very excited for his next project. We'll talk about that later. Mm -hmm. um, but Off D's is a, you know, a lyrical, um, lesson to all of the up and coming new wave of rappers that mm -hmm. JID is really on top and right. to get you know J Cole as one of his features mm -hmm. and to co-sign his work is really um, something that displays you know how well JID has done right. in in the game so far and exactly. then uh, my last pick is LMF by Smino mm -hmm. uh, sweet Listen yeah. to this before the show too. Yeah, we listened to all these songs before the show. Yeah. Uh, this one is a sweet little uh, melody and it, it's very catchy. Those are my picks for songs. Of the nice, week. those are really good. I'm gonna get into mine and it goes to our guy Earl Sweatshirt with his new single, Nowhere To Go, like mm -hmm. the number two. And this is like a very melodic, not really, I mean, it does have his lyrical qualities that he always puts on, but this is very, it makes you, want to anticipate an album that he may be dropping, but I don't know, it's been like three or four years since his last, no, about three years since um, his last, um, I don't think we can say the title. Yeah, I don't like, I don't, I don't like outside. expletive, I don't go outside. Yeah. Uh, it's been three years since that, and now he's kind of experimenting with different sounds, just like John Bellion, trying to find his, I guess, new wave of sound since his three year period that he wasn't making music, or wasn't releasing music rather and it's very catchy. Like, it puts me in my feelings, puts me in my bag, like, oh man, I'm just itching for new Earl Sweatshirt music. You know, I played that song and I, uh, I had to check Spotify again. I'm like, mm -hmm. did you play the right song? <laughs> did you play the right song, Spotify? Because this does not sound like Earl Sweatshirt. It doesn't. It doesn't. And you can hear maturity in this song. Just on this song exactly. alone. Yeah, um, when I was really into Earl Sweatshirt was when he was back on Odd Future and right. he was releasing uh, his mixtape Earl, and then he released mm -hmm. Doris. Those are Doris. like prime projects, and he's giving all of his lyricism, and he still does it on this song, but mm -hmm. it's just in a different way, and um, I, I like his artistry and the way he's able to uh, change his style. Yeah, me yeah. too. So I am super excited for what Earl Sweatshirt has that he might be um, working on a new album or something like that. Hopefully he is, so let's pray that he does. So. Now, those were uh, songs and albums of the week. Now let's get into our main segments. Uh, you want to start with anticipated albums and then we'll work, in, work our way into our favorite albums of the year. Yeah, so right. um, first up, I, I want to shout out Maggie Rogers, Heard It In A Past Life. Um, okay. One of the first songs I listened to is Alaska by her and it came after the whole Pharrell video where he was um, in, at NYU and he was, mm. you know, 
doing like a, a class session because right. you know he's a big artist and he wants to show some of the new music. Mm -hmm. um, he was like friends engineers. with the professor or something like that. Yeah. Right, you saw the video? Mm. And then Maggie Rogers uh, showed her song and he loved it, he vibed with it, he signed her. Uh, he brought her on this whole <laughs> tour around like all these different radio stations showing oh. off her music and she's getting ready to release an album. She had an EP uh, last year or earlier this year um, and you know that had Alaska on it, and it did, had different songs on it as well. Mm -hmm. But I'm ready to hear like a whole LP from Megan. Yeah, so exactly. that'd be really good. Um, and then just to finish off, uh, my anticipated albums. I'm always anticipating a Brockhampton album. Always, they always. have a new trilogy that they're about to release. Uh, Iridescence <laughs> was the first one from that, mm -hmm. and they definitely have a second one coming up. Most definitely. Um, and then you know you always got to throw in Frank Ocean. Always. Now, tell me a fun fact about Frank Ocean. You just told me <laughs> before the show. A fun fact about Frank Ocean. Well, he just released his Instagram page. It was private for a while. Now it's public uh, because he is a very cryptic and private person. But now his Instagram is public for all of his fans to go bombard with questions about new music and stuff like that. And his, the pictures that he posts are really interesting. Again, very, like, can't really decipher what he's trying to mean in his captions or the pictures he takes, but they're very artistic in that. Is something. If you're a fan of Frank Ocean, then I think you need to go follow um, his uh, Instagram page it's called Blonded. So Blonde E D, like Blonded. And yeah, at him, at him, at Frank Ocean. Hey, where's your music at? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, all right, those are uh, good things to start us off with. I'm going to get into. Well, I did put down Anderson Pax Oxnard, but it actually came out today. We have not listened to the album just yet, but we, uh, you heard Tense. Yes, from, with Kendrick yeah. Lamar. And that's very great. Um, Anderson Pack, he's more, he's a rapper and singer, but he, he, um, he's very instrumental. Like he plays drums, piano, sings. Um, so Oxnard was something I was really looking forward to. It's part of his like beach theme album collection. And I believe it has 14 tracks, so I'm not mistaken. You're looking it up. Yeah, I mean, the, the different features he has on this. He yeah. has Pusha T on a song, Snoop Dogg, wow. J. Cole, Q-Tip, BJ the Chicago Kid. Man. Uh, man. I mean, and then Kendrick, of course, and Dr. Dre. Wow. Uh, you know, that, that's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm ready for that, too. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, uh, those that was anticipated, but now I guess it's not because he already got it. So go let's do it if you haven't already, if you're a fan of Aaron's Impact. And, but... We already touched on this, but J.I.B.'s DiCaprio 2 is coming out, I believe, next week or the week after, something like that. Yeah, it's very close. Man, and we're huge fans of J.I.B. Um, the Never Story was one of our, f actually, did it come out this year? No, it came out it last came year. It came out last year. Yeah. Uh, man, he's probably the next, like, the next uh, hip-hop artist to really be on the level was, like, of a Kendrick and J. Cole, as far as lyrical talent. Yeah. And I'm very excited for this. Um, for this album. He actually dropped the um, features on the album today. It was B uh, BJ, the Chicago Kid, of course, J. Cole, and uh, LMA. Okay, yeah. And I can't remember the other person, but I'm very excited for that. And yeah, J.I.D., um, DiCaprio 2 is second anticipated album. And then I will get into our guy, I, we can both talk about this, Kanye. Kanye West is Supposed to be dropping Yandi next week, but after all the stuff he's been saying and doing in the past months, actually this whole year, rather, can't really, I don't know what to expect with Yandi. What, what's your thoughts on uh, Yandi? Because I still think it's going to be a good album, because, I mean, it's Kanye West, of course, but I don't know. Like, where do you think he's going to take it? Um, I know he's moving more towards a, an African sound. Mm -hmm. he, he did say he wanted to go back home. Mm -hmm. I feel like he might incorporate some of that. He's um, actually in Uganda, I think, uh, doing the production right now. Well, there you go. And <laughs> he, he'll definitely be sampling some of the um, different songs, mm -hmm. you know, from the area. Like the tribal and then, music and stuff like that. Right. And then also trying to get some of those um, instrumentals, you know, from, mm -hmm. from the area. Right. And that'll be really cool. I, I'm not sure where he's going to go with this, especially after the last song that he releases, I Love It. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, low you, pump. you have Ye and Kid See Ghosts up here, and then you have I Love It, which, you know, it's really catchy, but mm -hmm. I don't think it's something that uh, Gandhi would uh, promote. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's but maybe Yandi would. He would definitely promote, you know, I Love It. But, um, 
you know, I, I, I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm mm -hmm. still waiting for Turbo Graphics 16. We've been waiting for that um, since 2016. Yes, <laughs> and maybe 19. Maybe hopefully. 19, hopefully. Kanye? Yeah, please, but, Kanye. And please, yeah, just... Just stick gonna, to music, you know. Stick to music, yeah, That's please, it. <laughs> yeah, for our sake. Because we're big fans. But you're on the edge of me not being the biggest fan of you no more. So. <laughs> please, just stick to music. All right, so yeah, that was a good discussion with Kanye. Uh, do you want to get into the other picks that we have right here? Yeah, I, um, I went ahead and, and put mm -hmm. Culture 3 down by Migos because it's Migos. Man. Did you did you see them on uh, James <laughs> the, Corden? Yeah, the uh, carpool. Yeah, man, and their ad libs. Skirt, oh. skirt, 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 skirt. Oh man, you know they brought out like a uh, like a uh, like a piano for like little kids, and then <laughs> and then James Corden brought out, like a slide whistle to like. I don't, I'm not doing the, it justice by describing it like this, but it, it was funny. Like if you watched it, even though it don't sound funny me describing it right now. We should have our own carpool karaoke. We should. We haven't carpooled in a while, actually. Yeah. Somebody race. went and got a car out of nowhere and decided not to ride with me anymore. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Got to do big boy things. Yeah. We'll do it after Thanksgiving. How about that? <laughs> Sound good? Yeah. Okay. But, uh, yeah, Migos. Yeah. Migos is always exciting. Um, they are, I, in my opinion, two for two as far as the culture series goes. <clears throat> I don't know if it you shouldn't be as in, long. That's the thing I was going to get into. Culture One was, I believe, not, it wasn't 20 tracks. It was like 12 or 13. Yeah, I, that's my ideal, like, album length. But Culture Two was, I think, like 22, 24, 22, something yeah. like that. And that's, and for me, goes not to diss them, but most of their songs sound very similar. So, like, yeah. one after the other, flipping even the, though they're good. The, yeah, flipping the, flipping the, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can only get so much of that. You can for, only get so many Migos. flipping and whipping them. Flipping the whipping, I only get a few of those. Not humana, 22 humana. songs worth. Yeah, no. Humana, humana. <laughs> you only get a couple, uh, and mama. But yeah, I'm still excited to hear Culture 3, even though we just bashed Culture 2 kind of like that. But we still liked it. Yeah. Every time we go into like a party setting, we like hearing songs from Culture 2. To get you hype. I, I'm, I, what I do want to hear is more Migos songs from their mixtape days. Yes. Hannah yes. Montana. Hannah Montana. Hannah Montana. Hannah Montana. And also, we didn't touch on this, but each Migo member has released a solo project. Really? Yeah. Each each one I knew um, Quavo just did. Quavo, it was a oh, flop. Qua Quavo's was a flop. Takeoff just did. I didn't listen to it, but and I didn't hear any reviews about it. Not mm -hmm. sure. I'm I'm pretty sure that um, Offset Offset is going to release a full length project. Offsets will be the best. I think that's what it is. Well, I don't know. I thought Quavo's going to be the best, but I listened to it. Quavo is the biggest <laughs> member, but he's not the best. He's literally the worst. Yeah, I that, agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. Objectively. But even though we keep bashing them, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're still anticipating uh, Culture 3, and I hope you guys are too. Yeah. So. All right. And was, is this finally? No, we still got two more. Um, Drake said he's releasing an album early 2019, mm -hmm. which I think is a smart move on his end because... I don't think he's ever. I don't think he's ever even plateaued in his career. He's always gone nothing but up. You know, like, I, as far as success. Yeah, I feel like it's a mountain. A mountain. Yeah. So like, <laughs> he goes with uh, so far gone. That's a peak. Oh, okay. And then all right, we're gonna do this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank me later. Uh, take care. Yeah. Uh, nothing was the same. A little peak down. Mm -hmm. And then shot up with. Uh, if, uh, you're if you're reading this, this is too late. And then, and then all the way down with views. I didn't, I didn't like it. Rob Love loves these, it, but love these. Um, and then, you know, the and then Scorp or uh, 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 more life, more life. Oh yeah, that's all the way down. That's a <laughs> valley. More life. Um, and then a shot valley. back up with Scorpion because it, you know I, I like the, what he did with it. You know, having two sides, you yeah. can always listen to something on it. Again, I think if artists do <laughs> do do, sorry, my immature <laughs> self. Uh, if they do a long album, then split it in half. Like this section is going to be about this material, and then the other half is going to be about this material. That's what Drake did, and that's it. Didn't feel long to me when he did that. I'm like, all right, that's enough of the rap. Now he's going to get into the singing part. Like two separate albums. And he showed that he's very versatile, yes. and he can do both. And we exactly. already knew that, but the fact that he can release a project that incorporates both, right? That's and the fact shows. that he can make hits, like of course there's like non, isn't, no that's on <laughs> Astro World. Uh, nonstop. Nonstop is is it on Scorpion. Yeah, it's on non side A. All right, yeah, side A. But then on side B, you have Nice for What and In My Feelings. In My Feelings. Yeah. No, Nice for What's inside on side A. In My Feelings is 
Side yeah, B. you're right. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Nice for <laughs> what should be on side B. If, so side, B. if that was on side B, side B might be album of the year. Right. But I liked uh, um, Finesse. That's probably Finesse. my favorite on side B. But um, that just shows the power of Drake. He can successfully make hits from rapping and successfully make hits from singing. Even though he's not the best quote unquote singer as far as his voice, he's actually got better, I can hear from Scorpion. But still, the fact that he can do that for, for like 10 plus years now mm -hmm. and hasn't really like dipped as far as like numbers go, like he's still selling out arenas, I think even more now. A bunch of production, like, man. Nowhere to go but up for Drake. So releasing an album in 2019, I think is the best move for him. Still, like it won't hurt him at all. And then Jaden Smith. Jaden Smith. The He's, Sunsets tape. Yeah. Yeah. We cool. liked we liked yeah. his last album. Very good. Sire. Very good. Awesome. I really liked it. And I was I was really surprised with how great that album was, especially was you know too. with his awkward poetry uh, that he did on yeah. certain albums. Um, the fake deep tweets yeah. that he did like kind of bad kind of still does a little bit but but blue really that that section blue, the, off of sire is the blue amazing like, wow yeah yeah that and then fallen and then uh, of course icon yeah icon i mean everybody yeah. loves icon and watch me watch, watch me. me do this do um, this. <laughs> yeah so that but, was really good yeah no and uh for this particular um album he said he's gonna kind of go back to his old like um he said the cool tapes, like a cool tape story is kind of the, it's part of the title of this um, new project, but it's an ode to his other projects called the cool tapes when he was like 14, 15 and making music back then. So I don't know if he's going to cater to his old audience back then and kind of transition that sound into his more mature sound right now. I'm not sure. Actually, you can't really, can't really uh, anticipate what Jaden Smith is gonna put out because he is kind of an oddball. He did put out that song Goku. Have you heard it yet? Yes. And I really like yeah. it. So if it's an album of just that and maybe a couple like somber songs for like 14 tracks, I can I can deal with that. That's a solid Perfect. album for me. Yeah. yeah. So um, you want to go through some of our uh, favorite albums? Yes. Uh, quickly? We can go into favorite albums of 2018. 2018 granted us with a bunch of great music. I think everybody, I think everybody, pretty much everybody dropped an album this year. Yeah. Besides, like, maybe three or four. I mean, like, Frank Ocean didn't, and Big Sean didn't. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. I mean, beyond, I, everybody dropped an album. But um, I couldn't put all of my favorite albums on here. I just put some of them because there's too many to put on here. But uh, I'm going to start off with honorable mentions first. Um, first thing I'd like to um, shout out is Love is Everything by The Carters. Again, not the biggest Jay-Z and Beyonce fan, but this album was really good, in my opinion. Another honorable mention I'd like to um, shout out is Ye by Kanye West. Again, I'm a huge Kanye West fan, but, and I like Ye, it's not my favorite Kanye West album. To be honest, it might be one of my least favorite Kanye West albums, but I still, it's still a great album. I, I think that just puts in perspective how great Kanye West is. Even his, even uh, in my opinion, what is um, his not, that great sounding album still sounds great, if that makes sense. In comparison to other artists. In, yeah. yeah, exactly. Thank you for clarifying that. I agree. Thank you, my boy. All right, next for me would be, uh, for honorable mention still, is The Carter Five by Lil Wayne. I'd like to put this on one of my top uh, uh, albums of the year. But to be honest, the only time I'm listening to it is when I'm working out or something like that. And I don't really just, if I'm like at my apartment or I'm, my parents' house or just in a car, I'm not really going back to Lil Wayne's album. But I am going back to it every time I work out or every time I'm like active and want to get into that mood or like if I want to dance or something like that, I do go back to Lil Wayne. It was a great project. So, And for my last one, for honorable mention, it would be FM by Vince Staples, which just came out about a week or two ago. And it's really good. Like I'm a big Vince Staples fan, and this is a com not a complete opposite of his last album, um, Big Fish Theory, because Big Fish Theory sounded more electronic, kind of 80s break-in music a little bit. But this one is themed around um, Big Boy's um, Neighborhood, the radio um, show, and he kind of puts it like a radio format, hence the title FM. Still talks about Long Beach, still talks about his gang banging up roots and stuff like that, and it's very good lyrical content and all. So those go for my honorable mentions. You want to start with your honorable mentions, then I'll get into my 
Yeah, there was, okay. that sounds good. Um, for me, my honorable mentions are Invasion of Privacy by Cardi B. I was going to put it in my top albums, girl, but Cardi. some of these other albums uh, kind of pushed it out. Yeah. Uh, Iridescence from Brockhampton, not their strongest, but still a, still good. a decent project that everyone should check out just for its creativity. Right. Uh, Care for Me by Saba, I reviewed it earlier in the year, and same goes for November by Sir, mm -hmm. so you can check those out on the Real Deal page um, if you want the full you know, scope. But, you know, uh, Saba and Sir, sure. definitely great artists coming up. Saba. Really great rapper from Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, I met him a few times because he's from <laughs> Chicago. I know a lot of Chicago rappers. Rappers meeting all the Chicago rappers. You meet me. Like meet, help me meet other ones. Yeah. I always meet people. Always put me on. Yeah, I, I'll <laughs> drop something soon. Um, and then, <laughs> and then November by Sir. Sir. Very good um, album. Very good album. Really good TDE member. Yes. And yes. you know one of the rising stars on that label. Right. So cool. All right. Now let's get into our official favorite albums of 2018, set in stone. These aren't albums that we think are going to win a Grammy, or it might win a Grammy, but these are the ones that we always just come back to, and just always have it in our rotation when we listen to music. Uh, and this is no, this is not in any particular order except for the last one I'm going to mention. So I'm going to start off with. We already talked about it, so I'm not going to touch on it that much. But Drake, Scorpion, I always come back to. Um, very great album, top to bottom, in my opinion. Not there's some songs that are just okay, but there's not a bad song on this album. Even though it's very long, two sides, still each side is great, rapping and singing, right? Fantastic. Uh, I actually want to go back and forth until we get to our number ones. That sounds good. Okay, okay. so I'll start off with um, XXX Tentacion, uh, question mark album. You know, I'm not gonna support a lot of the things that he did. Yeah. But this album, I still go back good. to it a lot because it has a lot of tracks that I still vibe with and, you know, I understand um, where he's coming from. Right. Very sentimental. I get in my feelings yeah. like hardcore. Yeah. Um, Sad is one of those songs from the albums, mm -hmm. from that album um, that, you know, the video on YouTube is so cool to yeah. watch. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. he's fighting himself because he knows that you know his his demons are what he has to beat mm -hmm. and that's that's just one example of the many songs on that album mm -hmm. that really have more of a message than you know just surface level and i you know rest in peace yeah rest in peace yeah all right nice pick all right next up would be probably push a tease daytona it's something i always go back to whether I'm working out or I'm just in my like house or on my way to, uh, to class, I'm listening to Pusha T talking about him slinging dope in Virginia. Um, his rapping is very good and since Kanye um, produced all of the beats on this album, the beats are fantastic. And yeah, it's just something I always come to. Uh, I grew up a Pusha T fan, kind of. like I didn't dislike him, but uh, it wasn't, he wasn't an artist that I always try to look out for. But this album really kind of solidified him as like one of my favorite rappers now. And yeah, Daytona. You like Daytona too, yeah? Yeah, I, I love Daytona. All those albums that uh, Ye produced mm -hmm. and released. So absolutely. Um, yeah, I'll get into uh, Twin Fantasy by Car Seat Headrest. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard of great Carson. indie rock band. If you haven't heard of them, um, but you know something that uh, really struck me is that they re-released this album. It's a mm -hmm. reworking of an album that already exists. And I think a lot of artists could benefit from that, especially if they had a strong work to begin with, but they didn't have the materials mm, that, that you know sense. could really push uh, that material yeah. forward. That and so Car Seat Headrest definitely did that with Twin Fantasy. Stop Smoking, We Love You is a great song. It's really short, but um, awesome you know, sound and lyrics. Mm -hmm. uh, Beach Life and Death is another good one off of that. And, you know, if you want to get into them a little more, you start off with Teens of Style and Teens of Denial, mm -hmm. um, albums that featured songs on different video games. If, you know, uh, you play any of the baseball, MLB, the show games, nice. they're on that. But, uh, yeah, definitely shout out to Car Seat Headrest. Cool. I'm going to have to check them out. All right, next up is actually a fairly new artist, a new R&B artist, and it is Black or most people say six lakh, uh, but it's black, uh, please believe me. Um, <laughs> East Atlanta Love Letter is his album, and it is very good top to bottom R&B. Um, again, he's not the best vocalist compared to some of his peers, like Division and um, The Weeknd, even Frank Ocean, but the material and the way he moves his voice through the background of the music and 
the 808s and all that, and the lyrics that he uh, puts in this album are very, very good. It kind of surprised me, not gonna lie. Black has been out for maybe two years as far as mainstream success, and this is one of my favorites, like favorite R&B records of probably in the past two or three years, to be honest. Um, very somber, very dark, kind of, that's kind of the R&B I'm kind of into now. And I listen to probably every song, top to bottom, always, like on my way to school or whatever. My favorite tracks on this album are East Atlanta Love Letter and the last song, Stan. And um, there was one more, can't remember. Um, uh, Loaded Gun, that's what it was, I'm sorry. But yeah, that's, that was one of my favorites of the years. You guys go check it out if you haven't already. All right, so I'm gonna kick it with number three, Kids See Ghosts by Kids mm -hmm. See Ghosts. Self-titled. <laughs> Who's um, on Kids See Ghosts, Rob, in case people don't know? Oh, okay, so it's a collab between Kanye West and Kid Cudi, right. something that is, uh, they, they've been working together for mm -hmm. a long time. Kid Cudi mm -hmm. actually helped a lot with the 2008 album 808s and Heartbreak mm -hmm. uh, by Kanye West. And, and he, The Life of Pablo, too. Life of Pablo, right. he had a lot of great features on that album with the hums and, and mm -hmm. then on uh, Father Stretch My Hands Part One. Right. Um, and then one of my favorite songs between them was Erase Me, uh, which was off of mm -hmm. the uh, Man on the Moon Part Two. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so good, good songs to check out to get into their collaboration method um, before you get into Kitsy Ghost. Um, Feel the Love have features mm -hmm. Pusha T and then uh, Free, which is a Ghost Town Part 2, yeah. has Ty Dolla Sign. Ghost Town, uh, best, song, best song off of Ye, and then they follow it up with uh, the song off Kids See Ghost, which is my favorite. And right. then uh, Reborn is another one that <laughs> I love. Cuddy Mon Montage is another one that you know features a lot of just Kid Cuddy. Yeah, actually, uh, you, you mentioned every song except for my favorite, which is Fourth Fire? Dimension. Oh. <laughs> Fourth Dimension? Okay. Yeah, that's, that's my favorite. A lot of people like Fire, and I thought you were going to go with that. But I like Fire, but Fourth Dimension, I always go back to it. I gotcha. All right, that's a good pick. And we're going to get into, all right, so this will probably be a tie for first, because I have two that I can't decide what I like better. So I'm just going to combine them into one. It would be Travis Scott's Astro World and The Weeknd's My Dear Melancholy. Uh, I'm going start with Travis Scott. Huge Travis Scott fan ever since he released... Um, Rodeo, this was back in 2015. And then he released um, The Birds in the Trap Scene, McKnight. And now he released Astro World, and it is one of the biggest rap albums of 2018. He'll probably get nominated for a bunch of songs on there, especially nonstop, or not nonstop. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm blanking too. Yeah, I yeah. always blank one on here. But the one with Drake. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but man, it's top to bottom. Again, he does uh, some of his production. He has features from, of course, Drake, The Weeknd, um, Nav, and top to bottom is great. Like, if you like Travis Scott, this is probably the best he's ever performed sonically and lyrically. He kind of did a little bit of experimentation with his voice and with his music on this album that still kind of sounds like his past albums, but it, you can tell there's like a switch, but he did that switch perfectly, if that makes sense. And then uh, for, the other album, My Dear Melancholy, by The Weeknd. I'm a huge Weeknd fan, like we discussed in the beginning of the episode. Um, back when I was like a freshman in high school, that The Weeknd was someone I listened to like nonstop. Um, the only artist I listened to for a long period of time, uh, his album Trilogy, which again is um, three separate mixtapes that he put into one album, a triple album, as some people might say. And ever since then, I've been hooked. And this goes back or this album goes back to his darker, more uh, melancholy uh, sounding uh, <laughs> albums, which, I, which made me become a fan of him, like again. I like his pop stuff, don't get me wrong, but this is what, the, this kind of music is what made me fall in love with his, his music. Yeah. Uh, and he did it phenomenally. It's only like six songs, but it, every song captured an emotion with me that I'll probably stick for the rest of my life, so. Yeah, My Dear Melancholy by The Weeknd and Travis Scott's Astro World have to be my favorite albums of 2018. Sicko Mode was that song. We Sicko were Mode. To think of. Sicko Thank Mode you. and Nonstop are usually back to back in Man, my playlist. Yeah, so I, I get that. And they're like on the same, uh, kind of the same track list on both. Like yeah. they're about the second or third song on both. Same albums. level of uh, you know, intensity. Yeah, Man. definitely. I'll get into my top two now. Gotcha. Um, so, second, 
I'm not gonna give it the first spot because it's not like a full album, but Diary One by mm. Claro. Uh, gotta give it to my girl. Okay, so girl. Hello, Flaming Hot Cheetos. I like Flaming Hot Cheetos. Boy of My Dreams, Forever, Pretty Girl, and How. <laughs> Six songs off of this, it all hot. Hot. Fire. <laughs> Flaming Hot Cheetos, fire. Okay, it's great. <laughs> I'll see what listen, you say. listen to that. I mean, um, you'll fall in love if you listen to that mm -hmm. album. Um, and then I'm going to top it off with the Black Panther album. Because, Black Panther. yeah. <laughs> what kind of forever? Um, so the Black Panther album, great uh, music like from Kendrick search. Lamar. Yeah, uh, <laughs> pulled it up really fast yeah. on Spotify. But it features a whole bunch of artists. Whole and bunch. the thing about Kendrick Lamar, he gave his homeboys and homegirls Chance to shine. Uh, yeah, chance to shine. He had Schoolboy school Q get his bread mm -hmm. with uh, two chains in Saudi, yeah. and then uh, gave Khalid and Sway Lee their their mm -hmm. time to shine. Um, I like it, how yeah. he incorporated. Sorry, I'm just looking off his laptop. Right. Uh, I like how he incorporated. What's the uh, paranoid sob yeah. and uh, sob RB. and rbe yeah. uh, new uh, Oakland signing or uh, Oakland um, rappers. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he gave them a shine right here. And now they're kind of getting big just because of it. Yeah, and I'm then, sorry to cut you off. Keep, no, you're good. A big shot with Travis Scott. Big shot. Uh, and then Zachary had a lot of mm -hmm. uh, work on this album. Um, Absol, he, he gave his uh, black hippie uh, guys mm -hmm. some love. Yeah. Absol, Schoolboy Q, J Rock. Um, and I guess that you know transitions into the J Rock song that everyone knows, King's Dead. King's Dead. Um, it's okay. <laughs> and yeah, that's, really like that's the review. Um, of my uh, favorite albums of 2018. Great nice. picks, sir. Great picks. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 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 Hands are cold, but I'm going to let that slide. It's freezing. Uh, all right. Thank you for watching uh, this episode of Rob and Rob Show. Um, right here. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, this is our review of all the albums we liked in 2018. Hope we um, granted you guys new a new opportunity to listen to some of these artists that you may not have heard of. And, yeah, anything to say before we close? Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm Rob White. I'm Rob Segovia. All right, thank you for watching. See y'all next time.